Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we go back to the last week of the Rodeo season with Stuart Wilson. Plus Wes Stanton reviews the Beretta Silver Pigeon Classic. Stalking isn't all fun, glory and trophies. There's a serious amount of hard work involved. Back in March, I was under time pressure to complete the doe call on my ground. I'd spoken to the farmer the day before, who had spotted a group of seven that had ventured out of the cover to browse his early sown fields. Time is running out to complete the job. It makes sense that two rifles stand a better chance than one. So I've enlisted Stuart Wilson to help me get it done. I scout round the edges of the open space before setting in to scan from a high seat. Meanwhile, Stuart heads to another high seat closer to the centre of the farm. Things start off quiet and the day is getting brighter. I haven't seen any sign of deer so far and know the ground well enough to realise that if they haven't shown themselves in this spot by now, they probably never will. Stuart is having better luck than I am. The first signs of the local fauna are a couple of pheasants that sneak out of the field margin to enjoy some sun, and it's not long before his eye is caught by something bigger heading out of the forestry. Ready in the rifle, Stuart sees another deer coming out of the plantation to the right. With the doe turning broadside, a shot is on. <laughs> Stuart uses the Merkel Helix's quick, straight pull load to prepare for a follow-up shot, but the doe looks to be hit clean. He waits in the high seat a little longer, but nothing else shows itself. I'm across helping Pete with his doe call, um, so early doors, got across into the high seat under cover of darkness and then sat and waited on a likely spot, nice nice sort of tree line going down and away from the high seat but obviously spying fairly sort of regularly out the back of the high seat as well just in case something is coming round. Um, as the lights come up, you know, plenty of light, uh, doe comes out of the tree line, uh, noses across the margin and just onto the arable crop, turned round um, facing sort of back towards the trees and presented broadside shot uh, so squeezed off with the Merkel Helix um, she lit up for some reason and, uh, and, and, and ran towards the tree so um, I'm imagining that you know the shot was clean but I'm, she, she'll be in sort of I don't know maybe sort of 40 50 yards into the tree line no more um, basically dead and running on her feet when I got to the area there's a good amount of pins where I'd actually shot her and you can see where she's dug in and, and jumped um, and then, you know, blood all the way through into the tree line and, you know, looked a bit like a, I don't know, like a murder scene really. There's a lot of a lot of blood on some of the tree guards um, all the way through, so she's been pumping a fair amount of blood out and basically sort of dead on her feet, so, and, and there she was sort of 40, 50 yards in, so, yeah, very pleased with, um, always very pleased with a successful stalk anyway, when you manage to grasp something. Um, and, and, and again, pleased with the sort of the kit, the way the Merkel Helix and the Gecko Pro sort of uh, performed. Stuart heads off to retrieve his quarry, and sure enough, it isn't long before the blood trail leads to his fallen quarry.
Stuart bleeds the deer and drags it back to the truck, and I get there just in time to be given the job of performing the gralic. With the beast gralicked in the truck and heading for the larder, this morning's outing was certainly worth it. Leaving it late isn't my preferred style, but it looks like in the nick of time the dirt kill will be achieved. Stuart Wilson there doing the do with the radars, and now the shooting show news. This is the shooting show news, with the CLA Game Fair now less than six weeks away. The Clay Shooting Classic took place in Gloucestershire last week, hosted by Clay Shooting Magazine and the Clay Shooting Company. The popular competition saw just under a thousand competitors take part from Wednesday to Saturday, culminating in Mark Windsor winning the championship for his second consecutive year. Mark hit 144 out of 150 targets on the red and blue courses, as set by Steve Lovett at the Clay Shooting Company. We spoke to Mark after his win. All right, so Mark, congratulations Thank on you. the second year in a row uh, yep. as the classic champion. How, how does it feel to win it two times? No, it feels awesome. Re really big achievement, yeah, yeah. Fantastic achievement. So happy with it. I shot really well at the English Open, then I went to Cyprus. Um, shot fantastic out there, got a third place, podium finish. Fit us, but coming back from there, I'm still on a high from shooting really well at the minute and just really enjoying my shooting, taking it very seriously at the minute. A lot of preparation for each competition. Um, so yeah, just came here today with a with a relaxed but you know focused mind, um, and just got on with it and, and done the job. The shooting show visited the Greenfield site to see why the Clay Shooting Classic remains popular, whatever its location. It's good to be presented with such a beautiful ground and fantastic targets. Wes changes the locations of every three years, I think it is, and the last few years we're at uh, EJ Churchill, um, and it's nice after three years to to have a change. So. And Steve Lovett always puts on very good targets here. Mark finished six plays ahead of his nearest rivals, George Digweed, Nick Hendrick and Sam Green, all of whom hit 138 and had to shoot off for second place. Clay Shooting Magazine publisher Wes Stanton spoke to us about his aims for the Classic. It's no great surprise that this event's been going for 22 years and every year we've had robust support from the trade. This year we've had uh, fantastic support from Edgar Brothers and Zolly once again it's in the second second year of a three-year program for them. Game Ball have come on board as a cartridge sponsor uh, for the first time, and uh, Promatic continues supply to supply the traps. Everybody wants to be part of something successful, and this event is the largest independent uh, English sporting shoot in the country. And, it, and it's nice when people recognise that by putting proper sponsorship in, creating a really valuable package for the shooters, and so everybody can have a good time, whether they're prize winners or just there to make up the numbers. 20,000 people have now passed the deer stalking certificate level 1, according to examining body DMQ. The voluntary qualification aims to prove amateur stalkers' knowledge of deer species, the law and safe shooting practice. DMQ's Andrew Hoon said he was immensely proud that so many people had taken the course. More deer stalking news in Sporting Rifle magazine. Shooters have raised £10,000 for the Disabled Shooters Group in an initiative run by Clay Shooting magazine. As part of Clay Shooting's community crowdfunding project, individuals donated thousands of pounds to allow the group to send six shooters to the IPC World Shooting Championships in Germany. This test event could be the best chance to get Clay Shooting into the Paralympics. After shooters raised £9,000, Clay Shooting opted to add the last £1,000 itself. Shooting got parliamentary support as part of National Shooting Week. Geoffrey Clifton Brown, the chairman of the All Parliamentary Group for Shooting and Conservation, dropped into Ian Coley's shooting ground to smash a few clays. He said shooting was a great sport and it was really important to introduce it to new people. More than 70 shooting grounds got involved in National Shooting Week 2014 to get a new generation of shooters involved in the sport. Almost 300 people have taken advantage of a scheme to try shooting with Basque and Browning. The Browning experience, visiting game fairs across the country, gives people a taste of shooting supported by an accredited shotgun coach. The coach checks eye dominance, stance and gun fit and teaches them how to break the target. Basque announced that 291 people have got involved so far. That was the Shooting Show News. Hi there, I'm Wes Stanton, and this afternoon I've been shooting this Beretta Silver Pigeon Classic at Honesbury Shooting Ground in Warwickshire.
Now, uh, I tend to do quite a lot of clay shooting in my spare time, and on rare occasions I get to go game shooting. And um, looking forward to the 2014-15 uh, season, I might be shopping uh, around for a game gun myself. And the uh, Bretta Silver Pigeon Classic I've got here could well be a contender. It comes with an impeccable pedigree. Uh, Beretta have been in business since 1526, so they're coming up for their 500th anniversary. Uh, I shall be 56 that year, so I hope somebody is around to give me a present of whatever they're going to come out with that year. Now, as soon as I removed this from the gun slip, I knew it had to be a game gun. It spoke game gun to me. It has concealed butt plate, which is a nice touch. It has a beautiful Turkish walnut stock. It has remarkably good engraving. Again, beautiful figure on the walnut on the forend. It has a solid mid rib and it's a 28 inch uh, gun. Game gun indeed. Other aspects to it that suggest it's for use in the field more than on the clay range is the single brass bead at the end. Very narrow diamond cut rib and the fact that it's pretty lightweight and feels uh, very lively between the hands. If you look at the engraving here, you'll see that on this side there is an exquisite picture of a woodcock. On the other side, you have a beautiful picture of a French partridge. I'm not really one for uh, engraving on guns. Over the years I've seen that many weird depictions of uh, fowl that are somewhere between an emaciated duck and a very fat woodcock. But Beretta really know their craft when it comes to engraving and it really shows through on this particular example. So aesthetically, this is very much a game gun. What about technically? Well, technically, it has internal choke. The barrels themselves are chambered for three inch cartridges. They're steel shot proofed, as I would expect if I want to go uh, duck shooting uh, with this. Uh, that's what you need nowadays if you're going to shoot non-lead cartridges, of course. Now, taking a look at the action, this gun has a proven U-bolt action. It's got bites either side of the breech face that engage with these holes here in the barrel, making for an extremely strong lockup. One of the advantages of buying Beretta is that they produce so many guns that they're able to keep the price points of uh, what, what are really good quality guns pretty low. So in terms of value for money, it's what you get. And one thing I noticed about this gun, although, uh, although the literature that came with it said it was seven and a half pounds, I wouldn't have guessed that. I'd have guessed it would have been a little lighter than that. Um, it, was, it feels really nice uh, when I'm shooting it. It feels very lightweight, well balanced, and I'd be very happy just carrying it around the uh, shooting field all day. Okay, price point wise, this is 2,825 retail. It's getting up towards the price of a 686 double E double L and it's one of the more expensive uh, models in the Silver Pigeon range. They start from around £1,600. Well. But in, in terms of a gun that will give uh, years of service, well made uh, and at sub £3,000, I think this represents excellent value for money and you may well see me shooting one this autumn. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show.